What is up you guys? Welcome back to my YouTube channel, but most importantly, big shout out to you guys for supporting the channel. We did come home to some new car parts for the Lamborghini, but unfortunately we are not going to be using any of them, and I'll explain my reasoning why a little bit later, but let's go ahead and get started with today's episode. <laughs> As you guys saw in the last episode, we did finish up the cooling system on the car and we also converted it to an all-wheel drive. I did see your guys' comments and you guys were wondering why I didn't leave it in all-wheel drive, but I failed to explain why we didn't. And let me go ahead and explain to you guys why. It all starts over here with your intermediate shaft and then up here up front goes your drive shaft and that goes all the way to the front of the differential. But unfortunately, the problem started at the very back at our transmission. You have an output shaft that comes off of the transmission and that's what hooks up to the intermediate shaft. But unfortunately, our output shaft is being blocked by the oil pan, as you guys can see there. So I would have loved to keep the car all wheel drive, but unfortunately, that's what stopped us. But I'm not saying it's not going to ever be an all wheel drive again. That would be a perfect project for later on in the future. But as for right now, that's what we're gonna do just so we can get the car going. But we do need to start ordering parts for the fuel system. So let's go ahead and pull the filter out of the car so we can figure out the thread pitch on that filter. I am gonna be converting everything over to an AN line. It's a lot safer and less prone to leaks. So let's go ahead and get that filter taken out. the whole filter I went ahead and just removed the fitting so let's go ahead and run to the hardware store real quick so we can figure out the thread pitch on this Now that we figured out the size of those fittings, uh, if you guys didn't notice, those were metric one and a half. Uh, now we can move on to the fuel, the fuel system over here and we can figure out what else we're gonna need. I was kind of thinking about it and I'm um, thinking we're gonna go with dash eight feed lines and we're gonna go with the dash six return. You guys might be thinking that dash six is too small, which it would, but in our case, we have two return lines, so it actually has two separate tanks, one on each side. So you actually have a dual feed and then you have a dual return. So we're gonna go with the dash six return, dash eight feed. And then we're gonna go ahead and actually order up our intake too. We're gonna need a low ram uh, intake. And the reason for that being is our turbo kit that we're gonna be running or we're gonna be custom building. We're gonna use a three inch inter air to water intercooler. And it's actually this one that's up here. That's a Tix Performance Intercooler. Let me get it down so I can show you guys what I'm talking about. This is our Takes Performance Intercooler right here. It's air to water, like I said, so we're gonna actually have to run a pump that pumps water through the intercooler. Hey, look, get some candy. But, so basically how this works is, it's basically like your air to water in a cooler, except for air cooling it, it's, you have water that runs through it. And this is gonna sit in between our intake manifold and let me show you guys how it separates over here you see how it has some bolts right here you can un actually unbolt it and then this will sit in between it but the reason we have to get the smaller one obviously is because once we close our hood it actually ends up hitting on the top it's already pretty close now as it is so we're gonna end up having to get the low ram manifold to be able to clear everything 
But check this piece out, you guys. It's actually a really, really nice piece. Solid. While we're here figuring out what all we need for our fuel system, I'm gonna go ahead and check out the power steering system and see what we need for that. The power steering system, like I said early in one of my earlier videos, videos is actually gonna tie into the front lift. So we're gonna go ahead and use AN fittings for that so they get sealed up real nice and don't have to worry about any leaks. And then while we're here also, we might as well figure out what kind of fittings and uh, what tools we're gonna need to be able to get our AC adapted over to the GM compressor. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get all that stuff figured out and uh, I'll catch up with you guys here in a little bit. change of plan is going to be and we are actually going to be trading in our Lamborghini for something that I'm not going to disclose but I'm lying. Now for those of you that don't know me I've always liked to be unique and that is kind of what drew me towards this build right here. Um, you don't see many Lamborghinis with LLS's in them and actually there are only three right now in the world that I know of and that is ICT Billets, Gallardo, you got Flip Flop Speed Shops, Mercy, and then you have BS for Builds, Huracan. A little bit about those builds, uh, ICT Billet built that Gallardo that was a twin turbo gated six speed. Uh, Flip Flop Speed Shop built that Mercy Lago that is a naturally aspirated LS and also a gated six speed. And then you have um, B is for build, and they built that Huracan that is a twin turbo LS gated six speed. And so basically I was approached by a man named Roman with Art of Assembly down in Dallas. And he was like, hey man, I got a plug and play system for your Lamborghini and I can wire it up and make it work with your LS. And you know, that was, it sounded great. And I wasn't really too, excited by it because I had already had a plan and that was taking the cluster out, sending it to Dakota Digital, they were going to do their magic on it and then we were going to go and buy a Holly system and they actually make a module that makes both of them um, work together and that was the, the way I was going to go about making everything work on the car. Um, but he did let me know that it worked with the e-gear feature and for those of you that don't know what that is it's basically these paddle shifters right here so instead of running a stick shift you're gonna have a paddle shifter and so I kind of sat around and thought about it I was like man well I already bought all these parts and I'm gonna be you know losing out on all this money but the uniqueness is kind of getting to me because we would actually be the first ones that have an LS swap e-gear car Everybody else, that, remember, as I just told you, is a six-speed. So we are actually going to go ahead and purchase that system from Roman, and we're going to let him do the wiring on the car. He is also going to tune the car for us and dyno it. And it's super exciting, in my opinion. I'm really stoked about the e-gear system. So we are actually going to clean up that e-gear system, throw it back in the car, and we're going to keep on moving on until the car is ready for Roman. Then we'll take it down there to him in Dallas and we'll let him work his magic on it. But I do want to show you guys the parts that I did order that we are not going to be using anymore. So first to start off with is, you know, we have our cables. These are from Brandwood Cars. They are actually really nice cables, great quality cables. Um, the next piece that we have is this right here. This is your gear shift assembly. This is gonna sit on top of your transmission and this is what actually makes it, 
mechanical, so you bolt your cables to some brackets that come that bolt onto here. So we're not going to be using that anymore. And just to let you know, this is eighteen hundred dollars, and it took me about two months to get it. It came from the United Kingdom. And then lastly, we got our all billet aluminum uh, gated six-speed shifter. This one is from Superlight Cars. I actually struggled a little bit to get them to sell me one of these because they don't sell them to anybody. Um, I don't know why, I just was lucky enough to be able to get one, but it's a, it's not it's not a factory shifter, but this is what I see Billet used in their uh, green Lamborghini, and uh, it worked out fine for them. They had no problems, and the reason I didn't go with a, um, a factory Lamborghini shifter is because those shifters are $6,500 and in my opinion this one right here looks better than the factory shifter and it only cost me $2,500. But that's basically what all we have in parts and I'm not going to sell these parts I'm just going to put them up on the shelf and that way maybe possibly in the future if we do ever have problems with the e-gear e system or we just feel like switching it over then we'll go ahead and we'll already have the parts on the shelf. With that being said, that is going to wrap up today's episode. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you on the next one. Peace.